While making a video on graphic design in OBS Studio, I accidentally discovered that I could export video with a transparent background straight from OBS, which I immediately thought, hey, we could probably make stinger transitions with that. And if you don't know, stinger transitions are usually animations that play in between two scenes when you're switching them. It's a clever way of hiding the cut and it also adds a lot of production value. So now we know that OBS can do graphic design, can do animation. Let's try to create a custom stinger transition straight in OBS so that we can use it in OBS. The disclaimer part, this is for educational purposes only. I am not saying that OBS Studio is a good replacement for any motion design software. Usually you would make a stinger transition in something like DaVinci Resolve or Adobe After Effects. This is just a fun creative exercise, but also showing you the capabilities of OBS Studio. Now a quick word from our sponsor, and then we can begin. And this video is sponsored by Owned, which is having a huge sale right now during Cyber Week. Owned is the one-stop shop for live streamers. If you want overlays, you want emotes, you want animated emotes, you want badges, anything you need. But one thing that should grab your attention right now is that they have the official Call of Duty overlays for live streamers. So this is not something inspired, this is not something made to vaguely resemble, this is officially licensed overlays. And it's complete with intermission screens, your just chatting scenes, your camera overlays, even if you have a green screen, they thought of that. You got your labels bars, your animated alerts, and everything you need to make your Twitch channel look great. And I know I mentioned Twitch, but it's not the only platform that's supported. You're going to have Kick, you're going to have YouTube, absolutely everything you need. So go check it out over at owned.gg slash level. That is owned3d.gg slash level. Okay, so the first step, which could also be the last step, is to tweak your output settings in order to export transparent video. Thankfully, while I was making the graphic design video, I actually saved a profile with all those settings. So if you haven't seen that video yet, I recommend you watching it, but I'm going to play that specific part right now go to settings let's go to advance and now the color format bgra 8-bit okay now let's go to output we're gonna set the output mode to advanced go to recording and then under type we want custom output ffmpeg container format we're gonna select mov and then under video encoder select png click apply oh hi welcome back so I'm going to start by deleting this because I'm starting to get too many scenes on my OBS. This was a fun project, but I am afraid that it's over. We're going to create a brand new scene. And in that scene, I'm going to add some color sources. Color source, call this one dark, and we're going to pick a dark gray. Then I'm going to duplicate this, copy, paste, duplicate, select color. Here I'm going to pick my accent color. Let's go with blue because that color tends to do well in tutorials. Select it and press F2 to rename it. Then right click, paste, duplicate once again and we're gonna select white and name it white. And we can already create a very basic transition. We're gonna be using the move plugin for that. I'm gonna right click on the scene, click filters, click plus, and go to move source. Add that, we're gonna select the layer that we want, dark and that, okay. Click get transform, duplicate this, white, get transform. You don't have to, cause it's like the default, but I like to do it just to make sure. And this one will be accent, nice. So we have accent, white, dark, name them, and we're gonna duplicate them. The new ones are called one because they're going to be the starting position. So with accent selected, I'm going to select my accent color and I'm just going to bring it back to the left right out of frame. Now I'm going to click get transform. Same thing for the white and the dark get transform. So now if I turn on all the second position, I'm going to have this. OK, it's not great, but that's what we're going for. Now we can reset them. I'm still looking at this way, even though the camera is here now. <laughs> Now I'm going to set it so that when I click on the first one, the other one's going to follow up automatically. That being said, I don't really like the order. So I think I'm going to have white first, accent second, and then gray last. So I'm going to switch it up here in the layers, and I'm also going to switch it up over here. So in order to do that, we're going to pick white two, so second position, and we're going to go all the way down to next move or simultaneous move. I'm going to have to figure out. It's between one of those. Let's go simultaneous and see if we can add some sort of delay. So next move should be accent two. And when I go on accent two, so if everything went well, all of those should light up at the same time. And they do. OK, cool. Let's go to accent two and figure out if we can have some sort of delay. There we have a uh, start delay. Let's put 50 milliseconds. And for dark two, let's put a hundred reset and try again. Also, I did say I wanted dark on top. What am I doing? Try again with the right order. Pretty much, pretty much. <laughs> now I'm just going to slow it down where it says custom duration. I'm just going to add a higher value 600 for all. Try again. Yeah, 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 yeah. So now this is the part if you want a logo to show up in between or whatever. But um, yeah, we can make it go back to where it was or we can make it continue to the right. Let's go with the right. We'll just duplicate everything. 
and actually move stuff around. We're going to test it by making it go back to the second position. Ah, so pretty. <laughs> and now, since our dark or gray is our last thing to move, we're going to make it basically stop a little bit, maybe add a delay to the end, and then instruct it, and then instruct it to play the third movement. So that is dark two, so second position. And delay, we want maybe less than a second. Let's go 500, let's go 600. It's a, it's a theme. And basically that middle part where everything is covered on the screen, that's what we usually call the transition point. You usually need to input that when you're setting up a stinger transition. So it knows basically when it's safe to switch from scene to scene. Okay, cool, so end delay 600 milliseconds. What next? And yes, in this case, we're using next move and not simultaneous because we want it to wait. So next move should be dark three. And when I go on dark three, simultaneous move, remember, because we added a start delay, needs to be the other two. So simultaneous move is going to be accent three. And then on accent three, also simultaneous move will be white three. And this should be it. This should be all you need. In fact, while I'm here, I'm going to make sure that I don't have to click on three things in order to reset it. So I'm just going to put simultaneous move on the three number one positions. So white simultaneous move should be accent, accent simultaneous move should be dark one. Okay, so now that I want to reset, I can just go ahead and click on white. Bloop. They're all back there. So basically the animation is this. Something's wrong. <laughs> Why is it going in a loop? Why are you going in a loop? Oh, I know why. Since I duplicated it, one of the three positions has number two as simultaneous move, probably. Yeah, accent two, that's not normal. Just none. And it stopped. Okay, let's do this again. But definitely we can see that there's a problem with the delay. Let's see if that persists. Indeed, that does persist. Why is that? Dark should move first. Next should be accent three but I want accent three to have a delay, but that delay is not visible for some reason. Oh, that's because my start delay is inverted here since I duplicated them, of course, of course. So no start delay for the dark one. Accent color will have 50 milliseconds and white needs to have 100. Let's reset and play. That's it, that's it. <laughs> very, very simple, but you've seen people sell you stinger transitions like that. When you can make them in OBS, I'm not saying you should, but you could. All right, now the thing that I haven't figured out yet is how do I make it so that I record just that little snippet? All right, you know what? I'm gonna do a pro gamer move. I'm basically gonna click recording, click the start thing, and then stop recording. Tell me in the comments what your favorite method of automating this would be. I'm trying to make a video here, I don't have time. Anyways, let's make sure it's recording to the right place first. Let's go to output, recording. Uh, video bitrate could probably be higher. <laughs> let's go with 25 mega. Let's pick the folder. Okay, we're ready. We want it to be as short as possible. I messed up. <laughs> I messed up. Let's try again. I messed up again. Although that, that probably would count. I need to reset first. Okay. Also, I should probably mute my mic here so it doesn't pick it up. Most of the time you can't control the volume on your sticker transitions. All right, we're good. Hopefully, hopefully it works. <laughs> We have three MOV files right here. And I'm guessing the 50 is the last one. Okay, so how do we set up a Stinger transition? All right, let me demonstrate. Oh, hi. So I'm gonna go to Scene Transitions. I'm going to go to Stinger. If you don't see Stinger, you should be able to click plus and then add a, sting a Stinger like this. In my case, it will be Custom Stinger. Now we get to select the video file. I'm gonna pick this one. The transition point, as I told you, was when the screen would be full. I think in this case, it's gonna be around one second because the overall video is two seconds long. So we're gonna put 1000 milliseconds since we're not super precise either, right? We did it manually. And we can preview the transition. Let's click this. Okay, so the transition point seems to be a little late. We can see the next slide basically before it completes. See how it went blue? So let's do 1200. And that's perfect. We successfully created a Stinger transition in OBS Studio for OBS Studio. Click OK. And now if I switch to anything else, <laughs> the timing is not great. I'm not going to lie. It takes a little while to start. But other than that, this is like this is a success. 
This is just an example. I'm just showing you, hey, you can do this. This exists. Of course, if you take your time, I don't know if you spend a bunch of hours on it, making it really perfect, putting your logo, perhaps maybe putting some sound that, that gets triggered with it, maybe putting more graphics to make it look a little bit better. It's possible. It's possible. That's all I want to show you. It is possible. It is not necessarily the best way of doing things. I'm not saying you should do it that way, but if you wanted to, it is possible. OBS can't do that is not an excuse. <laughs> Even if you make a simple stinger transition like we did, you could probably use the shader filter plugin, for example, to add a little spice to it. I made two videos going over all the effects that comes with this plugin. And in this case, we can add something like the UV distortion shader without even touching the settings. And we immediately get a whole different vibe. <laughs> Let's distort it a little bit more. And just like that, we have something already different. That's with a fisheye effect. <laughs> Go watch my video to learn about all the effects. In conclusion, this was another what if video about OBS Studio. I do need to repeat that I'm not telling you that OBS is the best way to do this. I'm just saying that it is capable. Hopefully with the little tips and tricks, it might spark an idea or give you the ability to create something new. I have been Gal Level. Go follow me on Twitch and I will see you all next time. Go out there, make me proud. Gal Level, out.